have a bad idea. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney and this week I'm going to be waking up every day at 5 a.m. to read. I see all the cool booktube and booktalk girlies doing like the 24 hour readathons where they read for 24 hours straight and that is just not going to work <laughs> with my current lifestyle. What I thought could be fun instead to challenge myself is to wake up every day at 5 a.m. to read. I am not a morning person but I really want to be and I don't know that reading is the way to get me there but it's going to be a good try. I am very much expecting to regret this decision tomorrow morning when I wake up at 5 a.m. but what's life without a little bit of chaos you know? I'll keep you updated on the, all the books <laughs> that I read this week while I'm battling sleep early in the morning. Good morning. It's early. It's 6.30. The sun is shining right in my eyes, but I've been reading for about an hour now. I don't want to yell because my household is still sleeping. I woke up at 4.55, which is insane. I have a feeling that today is going to be the easiest day for me to wake up, <laughs> which I'm concerned about. I woke up, made myself a cup of coffee, and I started reading. <laughs> Overall, I'm not feeling too tired, but my eyes sure feel like they're tired. I started reading Really Good Actually by Monica Hazy, which is um, a book about a 29 year old woman who got a divorce. And if you've read a book like this, you know exactly the writing style of this kind of book, which is like, they're very long, paragraphs, kind of run on sentences, biting phrases that you just end up relating to. So it's about Maggie who is getting a divorce from her college boyfriend, John. <laughs> She's just going through the motions at this point. I'm about 50 pages in. The writing style is what makes this book so charming. There's not really like a forward progression of the storyline as of yet, but what there is are small musings about life itself. Sometimes you'll just get hit with this heartfelt statement that you're like, oh my god, I feel so seen right now. So for example, Maggie is talking about how <laughs> she's sad that she's not less hungry in, in the wake of her divorce. She says, sometimes during periods of stress or after reading too many magazines or listening to a much thinner friend complained about the size of her legs. I could feel myself tiptoe backwards towards counting, consuming an egg and thinking 70. If you know, you know on that, on that thing. So I'm interested to see if, if the book is going to continue in this way without much plot, but little musings about life. Either way, I'm excited to see how we progress but I'm gonna probably read like a, another chapter or two then uh, head downstairs to start working so day one accomplished <laughs> Good morning. It's the morning of day two. It is about 6.30. I'm getting ready to head to work. And I was right. This morning was harder to wake up from than yesterday morning. I think that my brain, knowing that I'm waking up so early is like, you don't need to sleep, girl. So I keep, I kept waking up last night and this morning, I was like, did I set my alarm? So when I did finally wake up, I was just like, I feel like I've been awake for two and a half hours. So that's annoying. I got like, you know when you don't sleep very well and your stomach starts to hurt? That's how I felt this morning. So that was not very fun. But I am about a third of the way into really good actually. Progress check. My assessment was correct. 
this book is going to continue from what i can tell this book is going to continue at like a slower moving pace we're a third of the way in and she's still very much processing her divorce but it's so messy like if you've ever been through like a significant breakup or i'm sure a divorce this is very relatable you have all these emotions and they're like such conflicting emotions like reading this i'm like oh my god i forgot that i felt like that <laughs> so oscillating between like wanting to go out looking so hot in case you run into to an ex versus like look walking out of your house looking horrible because you don't care she talks a lot about how she should be winning the breakup but she's not and she just hit at the very end of the last chapter i just read she just hit like feeling that rage that you get at the end of a relationship i think i'm gonna read more of this today i'm hoping to finish it tomorrow so i'm hoping to get more of it read and uh, i'm gonna head to work now which is why i look I look pretty put together for 6 30 in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. It is Wednesday morning. I am very tired. I slept better last night, but just barely. What's interesting is that like while my sleep schedule has been a little bit messed up, the rest of my life seems to be like easier to deal with. For example, I've been more dedicated to like making my breakfasts and lunches. It's nice in like a kind of weird way it feels like because I'm proving myself proving myself that I can show up for myself in the mornings like this that the rest of my life has been easier to like dedicate more time to. I'm exhausted today like I'm, I'm just not going to bed early enough I think. The waking up isn't too bad although today is the first day that I almost just didn't get out of bed. Just a couple more days I can make it through. I really can. I am about two-thirds of the way done with uh, really good actually. And this book is really good actually that was stupid you have to um, forgive me i am very tired maggie is just kind of struggling along and at this point she's become a little bit unbearable this is it's quite a fun book i started um a dog earing the pages that i find quotes that i really like on which if you don't like people who dog ear pages that's okay you don't have to dog ear your books i already bought this book in poor condition so i'm just gonna keep it anyways because i really like it she says about one of the characters in the book he had a calmly confident demeanor typical of the attractive but there was an openness to him that suggested something else an insistently supportive home environment maybe or religious upbringing he looked like someone who thought heaven was real that's so funny it's it it's just full it's just full of cute little nothings you'll be she'll be telling herself a story and then like hedging her bets after the fact you know like she'll be like i was perfectly fine i wasn't fine i did order 13 cheeseburgers last week and that's none of their business things like that i will see you guys tomorrow hopefully i'll have gone to bed at like 6 p.m or something reasonable tonight <laughs> I did end up finishing Really Good Actually by Monica Hasey and I loved it. I absolutely loved that book. The format stayed the format the whole time. You really did just follow Maggie through her first year or so of her divorce and yeah you kind of get this sense of her being a little bit of an unreliable narrator and her really struggling and her becoming the main character and like really centering herself i gave it five stars i'll talk more about it in my um at the end of this month in my june wrap-up but i did really like it if you're interested in the book i i suggest you check it out you might want to do like a download a sample or something because i don't know that the 
narrative style is going to work for everybody. It worked for me, but it might not work for you. And it's not, it's not one of those books that I think is going to broadly appeal to everybody. So just check it out. Uh, not to say that I'm, you know, of such high taste, but I don't want to recommend you a book that you're, you don't end up being interested in. So I did start <laughs> this morning. I did start Be Still My Heart by Emily McIntyre and Sav R. Miller. And so far it's fine. So far we have met our two main characters, one of which is a detective who seems to have gone through some trauma and the other is a lobster fisherman who also went through some trauma. Um, things to note up to this point, there was the line, what, what was it? It was, it was so disturbing. The line was, it lived rent free in my head and I was just like, that's too, it's too modern for me. That's, it took me out of the story. And then the other one was the main male character was talking about like, thinking of being intimate with somebody while he was on the phone with his sister and it just gave me the ick a little bit um and he said something like it's been a while since I've been buried in someone and I was like Bleh, bro not now not at 5 30 a.m so that's what I was reading this morning I am really excited to be done with waking up at 5 a.m because it makes for a very long day we'll see you tomorrow to wrap the rest of this lovely <laughs> weekly reading vlog up and to finally get some sleep <laughs> Okay, five days, five days of waking up at 5 a.m., five days of reading at 5 a.m. Technically, I woke up at 4.55, not to toot my own horn, but it is the truth. That is when I woke up. Here's what I learned this week. I don't think waking up at 5 a.m. to read is a good idea. <laughs> I don't know that anybody should do it. What I know is that waking up at 5 a.m. consistently would probably work really well, but waking up to then do an activity that isn't active just made me more tired. So I, a couple of times I was really having to fight going to sleep. And overall, I think my reading comprehension was down. I'm not super happy with my retention of the information that I read. Really good actually turned out to be a five-star read, but I don't know that it would have been a five-star read if I had read the whole thing at 5 a.m. And also my reading speed was down. Um, I had to read these books externally to the vlog prompt because I wanted to be able to finish them. Speaking of finish them, I did not finish Be Still My Heart because that book is a nighttime book. That is a read in bed book. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have books like that too, but that's not a read in the morning book for sure. And I didn't want to force myself to finish it. So I will finish it, but not at 5 a.m. Overall, I'm glad that I was able to push myself and get up at 5 a.m. But I don't think that I would do this again. And I don't necessarily recommend that you do it either. Lots of sleepy mornings, lots of dirty bathroom mirrors. I highly recommend you read Really Good Actually if that is your type of book. I don't know about Be Still My Heart. The jury's still out on that one. I'm not getting a good feeling. This dude is like really sexually charged in a way that is striking me as inappropriate for the situations he's in. And there, I don't know, sometimes in dark romances, it's like the characters are very poor me. I feel like there can be dark romances where the characters just don't feel sorry for themselves, but it feels like in Be Still My Heart, they do feel sorry for themselves. I will finish it because it's gonna be easy to get through, but I didn't have, I didn't have the patience to push myself to finish it this week just to finish it. So I hope you had a good time hanging out with me this week. I sure enjoyed finishing a challenge. <laughs> I'm not going to say that I enjoyed waking up at 4.55 every morning, but I did enjoy one of my books. I'm decently intrigued in the other and I can't ask for more than that. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye. Do you want a cute flower sighting? Look at, look at him. Look at him just basking in the sun. What a little cutie.